Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're looking at the sampler module in my favorite sampler, Geist. So you can actually use it as a sampler, not just a you know a preset browser, a way to uh, work with pre-recorded sounds. You can actually record into that. And the sound source today will be Tyrell N6. There are a bunch of presets from Noise Factory that are kind of cool percussion sounds. So I'll uh, let you hear that. So there's sort of like a, an 808 kind of uh, kick drum sound, some different claps, hi-hats, a lot of different sounds here that I think would make a decent sounding drum kit. So I'm going to start with the 80X sound. And so I'm, I'm triggering the synthesizer and I'm going to be recording into Geist 2. If you don't know, sampler can be found here. It normally says normal here above the pads, and so there's different settings, and one of them is sampler. So that brings up the sampler module, and we can make this a little bit bigger, this. And there are different settings here. Input gain, stereo recording mode. We can have it set as left or right. We can uh, monitor the input. We can control the level that uh, passes through this. Um, we're not going to monitor the input because we can already hear it through the Tyrell track. Then we choose which input we're going to use and record internally. So any of the outputs of Geist uh, can be recorded down into one pad, which is pretty cool. You can also select any of the sub outputs. There are up to 32 stereo outputs. That's the uh, outputs here that you would select for the uh, any of the pads or in the global mixer, whichever outputs you're going to. Then there are different ways that you can record or have this triggered. So we can have this on immediate, wait for MIDI, wait for the host to start, threshold, or timed MIDI. I like the threshold setting. That gives us a start and end threshold. So when the sound reaches this first point, it will start recording, and when the and it falls down below this point, it will stop recording automatically. I think that's a really smart way of working. And because we have no noise floor with this, we can actually set this quite low to like minus 40 or so. So if any sound passes minus 40, uh, it will start recording. And when the sound falls down below minus 65, it will stop. Then there's slice, single, next layer, next pad, next layer and pad no auto allocation. I like to have this on single and that will record into whichever pad I have selected. And if I don't like the recording, I can record again, then it's going to replace that recording. But if you have this on next layer, it will just keep recording into here until you have all eight layers assigned. Next pad will be each time you make a sound and it falls below the threshold, it will go to the next pad automatically. But yeah, you can have eight layers. You can basically have this set up to be automatic if you want to program MIDI. So you have eight different velocities for each sound and then a little gap, and it goes to the next one. You can actually fill this up kind of in an automated way. It might be really cool. But like I said, we're going to keep this on single. And then when arm is pressed, it will be listening for the input, and it will start recording once that threshold is met. Or we could press the record button directly, and that will just immediately start recording. So how do we actually get sounds in here? We're going to set this to external, and we're going to route from the Tyrell track into the Guys 2 track. Uh, if we wanted to record a guitar or a bass or something like that, or even drums right on this track, we would just have to record on the track and set it to an audio input instead of a MIDI input. But like I said, we're going to take the routing button and drag it onto the Geist track. So we're taking a send from Tyrell track. Uh, we're going to set it to Unity Gain, and we're only sending audio. We're not sending many because we don't want to also trigger pad assignments. We want to be able to choose which note sounds best for each of these percussion sounds and not have Geist affected by it. It's just going to be listening to the audio. So those are the settings we need there. We don't need to record on this track or anything like that. It all happens internally. So now I'll press arm, and then I can just tap a key on my keyboard, and we're going to have a sample assigned. 
And it's just that simple. It's really that quick. So now uh, I can click on this pad. Before we get too far into this, let's look at where that actually recorded to. So we're going to go to Finder. When you sample, it's going to go to your Documents folder in a folder called F Expansion and Geist 2. Inside there, you'll have sample captures, and then today's date, and then there's your sample. So that's where your recordings go. So back in Reaper, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to choose a different patch. So let's take, um, I'll take these claps, and let's say I want to assign it to this pad here. And by the way, it doesn't play back as loud because um, when, we're, uh, when we're playing out of here, it's also going through here. We can um, reduce that volume difference by just alt-clicking on the Tyrell track. And now we're not hearing it twice. We're, we've disabled the master send. So the Tyrell track is not going to the master. We're not going to hear it if we're not routing through the Geist track. It's just kind of a a quirk of Reaper, I guess you would say. We're duplicating the signal, essentially. So there we go. Go to the next one. I'm going to take a different clap. Sure, I like that one. So we'll go here, arm it, and there we go. There's actually a different way to get audio in here. So rather than routing through a send, you can also use a special plugin that is included with Geist that will uh, capture the audio for you. And this is a way that you'll need to use if you're in a DAW that doesn't allow you to route from one track to another, both audio and MIDI. So I'm going to go to the Tyrell track. I'm going to delete that send. I will enable the master send so we can hear it. And then I'm going to add in another plugin. What we're looking for is called Spitter 2. So the plugin is called Spitter. And this is just going to kind of sample your audio for you. And we can rename this, and it will change the name of what comes up in Geist. I don't know. We'll call this uh, sampling. And in Geist, we just need to set this uh, input for the sampler to sampling. We also call this, I don't know, George. And now it's called George. So yeah, you don't have to name it. You can just leave it as spitter1. Uh, but I just kind of want to show you that this is a separate input. So we're going to choose another pad. We'll choose pad 5. And in Tyrell, we'll choose another sound. So let's take that sound. And once again, we just have to arm hit the sound, and it records that. And let's do one more, I guess, on pad 9. We'll take that hi-hat, arm it. There we go. So let's just try this out. I don't know. We'll take hi-hat like that, and kicks. So now if we want to save this as a preset or a kit, there is something that we want to check. That's in the Tools menu of Geist 2. Enable Save Samples with Presets. So that's probably turned off by default. So just make sure that that's turned on. And then we can go to the File menu inside of Geist again and go to Save Preset. We want to put this in with all of our other projects and uh, content, so we're going to my sample library drive, content folder for guys 2 user content, and we're saving a preset, which is a preset is everything. So it's all the engines, all the kits, all the samples, all the effects, all the routing, all that stuff in one file. You could just save this as an engine or just as a kit, but just for convenience, so they know that everything is working correctly, I'm just going to save it as a preset. So we'll call this Tyrell kit. And we'll just look in Finder again and Presets. And because I enabled that option to save the samples with the kit, I have all of those recordings here. 
So that's about it. We looked at how to get sound into here in different ways, how to use the threshold mode with single recording. There's a lot more you can do with this, but I want you to explore this on your own. It's such a simple way of recording samples, and you don't really need to go in here and edit anything after the fact. It's, it automatically chopped that up exactly how I would want it. Such a big time saver. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blogs through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.